Yeah, we're on fire. We're killing it. Anytime there's a Zika head joke. Yeah. I hate puppies. Not we, funny. And we talk about things we shouldn't talk Good about. Good podcast. Got that out of the system a little bit. Got a lot out of the system. <laughs> I feel threatened. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Inside the Pallet House, only podcast dedicated to hopefully helping you solve first world problems, or at least acknowledging first world problems. We're just back to uh, the original. Yeah. It's just... It's just us again. I'm not blowing smoke anymore up the listener's ass. It's like, we just... We tried this week. We did try. Like... We did try. The team... What? Who, how many guys are on our team? Another three? I'm not going to name the names, but three? Within this, who should be in these walls? On our group our group text? Yeah. Three. There's, so there's five total. You, me, and three other guys. Yeah, Abacus. Okay. I, I don't have names. <laughs> Ely. Yeah. And Stu. Yeah. So we started a group text early in the week. I just feel bad they all have broken thumbs. <laughs> yeah. Can't believe it. Give him four days it's, notice. It's bad when you don't even get like the middle finger emoji. I don't even see the dots. <laughs> we didn't. Like they're fucking they didn't typing even think and then about delete. responding. Yeah. They were like, ew. We're like, hey guys, by the way. Oh, everybody was responding too when we had the jokes going. And it's yeah. like, then I throw out the, the hand grenade of, you know, hey guys, we're recording Thursday night. And then just straight crickets. Not even dots. Not even crickets. No, nothing. <laughs> Yeah, at least if they acknowledged it. I guess they're all dead. If they sent, like, a cricket. Yeah, that would have been been funny. That would have been funny. Maybe they're they're not with us anymore. Who knows? Don't know. Who knows? Well, you just looked. Did we get one? No, we just got a text. We got an email. Fancy football email from our uh, muscle head. (laughs) Unbelievable. He's just just twisting in the wind. (laughs) He is, man. Unbelievable. But thank you guys for tuning in. As a reminder, we are brought to you by Screen Door Mortgage probably my favorite mortgage company that's out there but honestly it's a a difficult uh situation they will make your life a lot easier so reach out to screen door mortgage real easy to find screendoormortgage.com and i'm going to send a rando shout out if you need wood planed check out rock dingo woodcraft by the way ran into your wife today at the school thing and i i I guess she didn't tell you this. You're looking at me like it's crazy. So I said, hey, I said, by the way. Well, my daughter told me she saw you today. Yeah. And then my wife said, he knows. So I think she thinks she told me. (laughs) No, now that you're saying this, I think she thinks so. Well, I saw your wife and both daughters because I had to go up there twice because it was a sixth grade orientation and then a different one was a seventh, eighth grade. Okay. Your girls fall in the same bracket. Mine are in two. I had to take one son up there, take him home, pick the other one up, go back up there. But anyway, I saw your wife, and it hit me because I hadn't talked to you much lately. I just said, my wife and her were talking, and my wife was like, oh, yeah, you work, you're working from home. How's that going? And I said, oh, by the way, did Brendan ever get that big slab of wood in there? Because you the oh, last yeah. time we actually talked about it was it was sit- sitting behind you, and you were working on it and finishing it. And she took her phone out and showed me all the pictures, and it looked the whole damn thing looked amazing. Like It looked like some of us... No, I mean, it came out fantastic. I mean, it looked great. It looked like a space I would never want to work in, but it looked like something out of a home and garden. No, know, it was book. beautiful. Like, and that's why I so actually... The uh, wallpaper in the back and the whole yeah, nine yards. The, yeah. the guys over at Rock Dingo Woodcraft actually were engaging with us on Facebook. Oh, because y'all took some pictures and tagged No, it? no. They were like, literally, oh, nice. he was congratulating me on getting a boat. Ah. And so I was like, respect. And so I was just thinking about him. You should send some pictures. So I wanted to say, yeah, I probably should. Yeah. Probably should, but like, if it wasn't for the guys at Slabadabadu who were actually cutting down and yeah. and and drying the wood and have the Tag great, them the great live slabs, and then and then you know Rock Dingo Woodcraft being able to like plane it and help me yeah. with the beginning of the sanding it, like got it to the point where all I had to do was finish work and really dial it in. It was like, send, but they you, all gave me pro tips and yeah. pointers. Like, you got to send, in, you gotta send in the picture of the. Of just the slab of wood when you got it, and then the final product, and be like, turn this into this thanks to these guys' help. That's a good call. Yeah, because I mean, call. honestly, that like, y'all took a small space and turned it into a dope working space. Like, yeah, all, any woman would like to have something like that. It was it was awesome. And my frame out technique worked. The perimeter frame. Yeah, yeah. I used I used I used your technique, and then I used the tips that that all the guys were able to give me. Yeah. And like. 
put it all together and it's solid dude basically just spent uh you know like probably about like like five days of like just head down fucking with wood which yeah is, like, that sounded bad <laughs> Just five days of head down fucking with wood. Reminded me of or your typical year. college week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we were both going for the same yep, joke. I yep. just went a little younger because yeah. I'm awkward. Like, yeah. No, it came out really well. So it was awesome. It was very cool. So it was, uh, yeah, I was, I was, I was pleased. I'm glad, I'm glad she, she had pictures at the ready. Boom. Was able yeah, to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was excited to show it off, which, I mean, she should be. You worked your ass off. I'm sure she did too. I mean, she busted her ass doing yeah. stuff. There wasn't, uh, wasn't just me. You know. I can't design anything like that. Like picking out wallpapers and light oh, pictures. I'm, I'm and not good at colors it and you know patterns. Like, does this pattern go with that? Like, I have no idea, dude. Yeah, I'm just good at doing the grunt work. Yeah, I'm Irish. I'm a ditch digger by nature. Yeah. I can just do stuff. Manpower. Yeah, that's what I got. I'm one manpower. <laughs> one manpower <laughs> on your best day. Yeah, that's that. You is, usually that come in it. just under that. More often than not, <laughs> more often than not, I'm feeling relatively strong today. You know that's good. Yeah. Despite despite a long week of travel yet again. Yeah, dude, you're just the road dog these days. I've been on the road myself. I've been out of town three days in a row, not overnight, but like driving hours each direction, like just getting windshield time left and right. It's not. It's not fun. No, no, I'm pretty beat myself. Yeah. I was in. Uh, I had the. I went to Nashville this week, which sounds super exciting. I still have yet to go. Still on my to do list. I still. I still feel like I need to go. Yeah. Like I flew in there, worked my ass off. I flew out. It was one of those. Well, that's why I don't know if we talked about. It. I think I t- talked about it at the end of my road trip. My son. He's yet to get the invite. This whole damn thing is ridiculous. But he's supposed to go to one of three European countries, but we're not going to go because one, we haven't figured out the dates. Two. We don't have uh, passports that, and it'd be like in the next three or four months, and like it'd be a hassle to even turn that around. Just to move on, but them, most important, it's good to have them. I know, and it's on our to do list. It's been on our to do list, but really, the main reason we're not going is don't really have the time off. The wife doesn't have time off, so it'd be like me and him doing like a turn and burn, and it's like I don't want to do that to Ireland or to England or no. to Switzerland or wherever. You know, on the, top of that, now you need to get a visa. Americans are no longer, at least starting in 2024. Oh, really? We're not allowed to travel to Europe without a visa. Now, apparently, the oh visa is a very easy hurdle. Uh huh. It's just like you fill out some paperwork, and they can like spit the back out. Passport's not even an easy hurdle. No, that's the harder hurdle. Wow. Apparently, the visa is like as long as you give them like 12 hours notice and do some online application, they'll spit out a visa. Why but, is it like the world's gotten smaller? Air quotes. You know, we can like talk to each other and you know do business instantly around the world but like certain things like this feel like they're getting harder it used to just be like i'm gonna jump on a on a merchant marine ship and and go overseas yeah. and like hitchhike my way across across the country you know continent all the continents and now it's like mm-mm. you see that uh little that island down there in the bahamas you gotta have a passport to go like wait what yeah, not the Bahamas, but you know what I'm saying. Like down in the Caribbean, it's like well, it's gonna change. That up. one you're good. That one you're not. It'll change up soon. It'll change up soon. The more and more we get closer to these aliens being real, the day an alien shows up and actually does something, shoots a ray gun at any one thing, I don't care where yeah. in the world it is, everybody goes fuck. Us humans better join yeah. together. But outside of that, we're gonna be divided until something that's not human yeah. shoots at us. We will unite just quick. Come, aliens, if you're listening, just come down here and do, just give us teleportation. So we can leave? No, just so I can go from across the country in an instant or across the world in an instant, you know? Yeah, good luck with that. We got people fighting over everything. Like, I'm not doing that. You do that. You're a sheep. You're this. You're that. And now you're like, oh, but getting this teleport, we're not going to be stealing any DNA on your way from here to there. You get in it. If you saw it work, you get in it in a second. Now, your next trip out of town, you'd be like, give me that teleport. I don't know, man. Like, I saw multiplicity. Those people get dumber every time. Every <laughs> I saw time. the fly. I know how it works. Yeah, like, this shit doesn't go yeah. well. Like, I am, that is one thing I will, I will sit back and wait a few years. Yeah. I want to see the first person who shows up with his dick on his forehead. And, be and like, then be like, oh. now I'm in. Wait, yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to Amsterdam with this cock forehead. I'm going to get a workout. 
I mean, is it even cheating if it's on your head? That's a great question. Like, baby, I I never unzip my pants. Yeah, I literally that one's for you. I, I yeah, <laughs> I headbutt her. Yeah, but she was asking for it. She said you weren't as pretty as her, I was, so I headbutt the shit out of her. <laughs> I was protecting you. It's the least I could do. I'm a hero. I was protecting your honor. Yeah. yeah, you're right about the technology thing. Like, I can't get my cell phone to work half the damn time. You know, like. And I'm just going to trust that I can yeah, teleport yeah. over to England. You're like driving around and you're like, oh, I think I'm turning around. Let me pull out my map. And then it's like, that's the time your phone doesn't want to find the internet or the, or the yeah. signal. Like, all right, this is going great. Yeah. What, will you lose a signal somewhere over the Atlantic in the middle of the teleport? <laughs> <laughs> you just drop yeah. your ass? Yeah. No, I'm going to let that one ride. I will not be an early adopter to teleportation technology. Yeah. It wasn't even my point. I'm just saying, if they shoot a ray gun, no, you're right. Like unite. that is in movies, that is what brings us all together. You get Ukraine and Russia, and they're battling. And if on that battlefield some spaceship shows up and nukes a Ukrainian, the first motherfucker to shoot that thing is going to be the Russian. Yeah, and be like, oh hell no. Yeah, not on my watch. That's my enemy. <laughs> yeah. Stay the hell out of yeah, here. Exactly right. You'd be surprised how quickly. Yeah, we all join together. I mean, you've seen, you, you remember, like, like 9-11 happened, and, like, New York went immediately to, like, everybody was, was like, oh, yeah. united. Like, yeah. that's what Americans do. We, we, get, we get fucked with, boom. We all join up. Well, when it goes against the entire human race, we'll yeah. join up quick. Speaking of 9-11, I saw a meme yesterday that had me cracking up. This should, those, that should never, that sentence should never work. You can't say, speaking of 9-11, I saw a meme. Yeah, well, up. you got to let me finish the story. I'm, I'm, just let, I'm clutching my pearls. So I'm the, offended. So it says at the top, it says, I'm just thinking about the guy who bowled a perfect game on 9-11. And in and, and the meme is a picture of a dude like at a bowling alley. And it's just a, a picture of some average looking dude and at the bottom is a little brass plate that has 300 game 9 11 01 and i just started laughing i'm like who is this guy i want to know this story did like, somebody really who the fuck goes bowling on 9 11 so i sent it to fuck that guy I said, so i sent it to to my college buddies and we got to talking about it and we kind of came to the conclusion that the dude was probably like a midwestern dude who like might not even like watch TV on a daily basis. Like, cause you got to think, you know, 22 years ago, like if you didn't turn on, you, you didn't have a smartphone blowing up in your pocket. No, so if you didn't turn on a radio or a TV and you just went to your bowling league every week, you might've just shown up, but you still think people would be talking about it, but you might not have known the extremity. Like you're sitting on a tractor. Yeah. You've been, you've been plowing all day. Yeah. You started plowing at seven. Yep. You know, nothing's happened yet. You've been plowing all day, and then you finish up and just drive straight to your league, and you never turn on the radio. Yeah. And he gets there, and he goes, wow, nobody's here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Like, And then he bowls a perfect game and goes, you got to engrave it, Bob. I, I got to have proof. Yeah, but then I was thinking, like, if you're, if you're Scott, the guy, the med, whatever the guy's name is, like, don't you just be like, can you put that a day ahead? No, a day I, back. That's what I don't I'm want saying. to be the guy well, bowling yeah, the I'm, next yeah, day. Yeah, I meant I meant a day ahead, like in yeah, back like nine ten. Nine ten. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, nine ten. You know. Or like, you could go o two. A year later, we're good. Ugh, I got it. I have to fly somewhere for work on September eleventh this oh. year, and I have avoided being anywhere near an airport. Yeah. And it, I'll, I, I'd be lying if I, I'm not like apprehensive about it. Well, you got to think, like, and you'll have to report back on this, but, like, it's going to be palpable in the airport, right? It's got to be. It's got to be, even 22 years later, right? Oh, there's zero chance I get through security without some hiccup. Dude, I have one, maybe two friends that picked that day to get married on. Why? Oh, because they knew it wasn't going to work. They're still married. They're both still married. Huh. One in one's defense, one might have been the tenth, but I know one was definitely the eleventh. I was at I was at dinner tonight, and there was this guy, right? And he's sitting there, and he was talking about how this year he was turning fifty, and he's having his birthday, and he was like, he was like asking his wife, he's like, "What are we doing for my fiftieth? Because he was talking about how every big big birthday that he's had, they end up in like fucking mellow mushroom, and he's yeah. like. 
He's like, I just like once. Yeah. To have something. And she goes, it's your niece's wedding. Or it's your nephew's wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to the the wedding. Yeah. Your birthday. She's like, you know that. And he's like, well, can't we just do something else and maybe like breeze in? Like, can we can we just do something on the day? And she was like, he only gets married once. And I turned and I said, statistically speaking, <laughs> I guarantee he only turns 50 once. Yes. But odds are that your nephew is going to get married very, twice. Very, very good point. I was like, so st- st- statistically, you so, should celebrate the 50th. Not so the where do you, where, what's your vote on that? I think you, you accept the, uh, the free party, but yeah, you definitely do something sick. Yeah. But, uh, it's your 50th. I mean, I don't know. You know me. I'm not a big birthday guy anyway. Okay. Let me ask you this. Your 50th birthday. Yes. You wake up to a blowjob and a cup of coffee. Blowjob and bacon. Good birthday? That's a great birthday. There you go. So I'm saying, okay, so this when you could say be do, fixed. Yeah. You could fix this. Yeah, but I was thinking you meant like do something like go skydiving or something. Go out of town somewhere you've never been or something. No, something even more rare. Breakfast in bed and a blow <laughs> I mean, you got to do... You got to do a significant family. Ma- like, if you give a shit about your niece or nephew, you got to be at their wedding. You yeah, don't. You can I mean, still you make it very it. special. Yeah, I know. Well, yes, you can, <laughs> you can make it. You can make a random Wednesday special. I mean, come on. Yes, but your 50th birthday. Come on. But like, I'm not asking for much. I didn't even ask for my favorite meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, I don't know, man. Like, actually. I spent a big birthday at a wedding and had a blast. You did. <laughs> I, I was think there. That was my 40th. I was there. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. And you had a blast. I did. That was a great wedding. It was. And we took shots. Yeah. For your birthday. Exactly. Not in front of the bride. No. Didn't disrespect no. her moment. No. Took them with the groom. Yeah. Because, you know, fuck yeah. But that, I mean, I don't know. It, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a sticky wicket for sure. Like. If I'm that dude, I ain't trying to fight that fight. Like, yeah, I'll go to the wedding. Fuck yeah. And then the next He's day. He's not we'll, fighting the fight. I'm yeah, just yeah, fighting. Yeah. I'm saying the things that he doesn't want to say. You are, you are speaking factually. Like, he will only turn 50 once. And the, the odds the are. The odds that, are. The heavy odds. Like, yeah. the betting favorite. She said he only gets married once. I said, eh, statistically speaking, I know for a fact he only turns 50 once. Yeah. I don't know that that kid only gets married once and the odds are (laughs) that's a sad state of affairs that's usually what causes it (laughs) (laughs) i set that one up (laughs) you did totally accidentally i was like yes spike Spike. (laughs) but i mean that i don't know i just was just thinking about it so the way i feel about it is like if you're gonna like i don't know i feel like birthdays big birthdays like that you're 50 60 70 whatever 40 like i feel like planning your own big party is a little weird anyway right it is it is like if somebody does it for you you're like that's very generous and nice of you but like planning your own birthday party well I mean, I've, I've i've told you how i did my 30th yeah you got out, you got the hell out of town and then i threw a rager on my 31st yeah. and so for the next decade i was a year younger <laughs> in everybody's eyes yeah so I was telling him, I was like, you just need to throw down on your 51st. Yeah. And everybody will now believe you're 50. Yeah. And then all the way up until you're 60, you don't have to fess up. They'll be like, oh, yeah, last year was your big one. Yeah. It's your turn to 51 this year. You've just lost a whole year off your life. Yeah. Beautiful. I don't think people want to lose years off their life. Well, you've, I threw you've, a good party for myself. Like, we, we hosted a good party on my 30th. We just moved into our house. Like oh, six go. months, eight months before, and I was like, "We got a backyard. Like, let's House do this." Slash like, party. Yeah, because we moved in in December, and I was like, "Let's have a damn party." Like, I respect that. No, it wasn't a housewarming. It wasn't like bring shit, but it was like we got the space. Let's fucking cut. Well, I tell you what, if I tell you it's a birthday party, I'm probably not going to bring you anything. Tell me it's a housewarming party. I feel obligated. Interesting. That's, that's actually the move. I could see that. You know. Tell them it's your 50th anniversary. How many housewarmings now do you have to... How many times do you have to bring, bring presents, though, honestly? To anything these days? No, it's I'm not saying, a, like, a people, move, people move pretty regularly. Like They do. You've moved your fourth... Let's say you moved your fourth time. Do I still owe you a housewarming gift? Like Yes, motherfucker. 
then, then well, you're going to be highly disappointed. Spoiler That's alert. Fine. I fully anticipate that. <laughs> <laughs> Especially yeah. when most everyone I know is upgrading their house and getting bigger, nicer houses than I have. I'm like, you're good. You're good on it. That's true. <laughs> That's true. You should just throw me a party. You're already rubbing into my face. Yeah. I don't need to give you an orchid. Yeah. <laughs> Your house is three times mine. I think you're set. I think you're good. <laughs> yeah. I did have a housewarming party once, and a buddy of mine showed up and threw up all over my new carpet. Oh. I was like, no, there's a good gift. The gift that keeps on. Can you tell me who it was? Uh, Do I know him? Not here, only because in a few weeks, this, there's going to be something where it would be a little odd. If I <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll explain it to you off the air. Nice. But no, I cannot. So I've noticed I'll something interesting it. this week. You know, ever since last week it came out that I was getting the boat, I've had yeah. more people reaching out to me, bringing up the boat. Yeah, boats are a big thing. People love that I have a boat. Yeah. Well, you're going to make a lot of friends. I th- I'm already seeing that. But you got the wrong boat to make friends with. Well, that's the beauty <laughs> of the boat. <laughs> I'd love to have you guys come out. Yeah. But I basically have a motorcycle with a sidecar. Exactly. You know, like, all right. You've got a second jet ski that's actually connected to your first one. So it's like, yeah, you could come, but you're really yeah. just going to be sitting there. Yeah. So I was down at the bay. Uh, last week, yeah. How the whole, how the whole, like picking it up, like getting it, like taking it out, getting it back here and park to see you got it tucked back around the corner of your house. Yeah, how'd all that go? Dude, I'm the great at dri- driving a boat trailer, dude. Your first off, your driveway is just a pain in the ass to back up and down anyway with nothing. Nightmarish, like. And it, it looks devilishly easy because it's mostly straight, but it's got just enough bend in it to fuck with you. And then, like, your house is butts up against it, so you could actually fucking just smash into your house. Yeah, my dad backed out of here one day and just ran over my light post. Oh, yeah. Which is not even close to the road, but no, he was going yeah. straight and shows how much curve. He was just going straight, and then it was like, boom. Got a new light post out of it. <laughs> It's kind of cool. Luckily, he stopped before the mailbox. Well, I think when he hit the light post, it really it woke <laughs> it him up to the up. fact that he wasn't on the he wasn't on the driveway anymore. So can you can you move it around since you do have an asphalt driveway? Can you like pick up the nose or push it around or anything? So I drove it forward into here. Nice. And then unhooked, unhooked it. it. Had my wife. I moved all the cars out so my wife could get out the other side. Yeah. And then I just literally picked it up. Turned it and pushed it back in there, and my back hasn't been right since. Yeah. It's a horrible plan. So you shouldn't do that? No, that's the plan. Oh, okay. There's literally no way other to do it. Yeah. It's brutal. Well, and your driveway has that crazy transition at the road. So you can't back it in. Yeah. Or you jam the you might, boat into it. might slam it into the driveway. And the, the tow hitch jams it. Like oh, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we just tried to turn in, and it was dragging so bad out on the street. I was yeah. like, holy crap. So we had to do like the world's tightest turn to kiss the mailbox on the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Got it up there. It's it's not going to work. It yeah. Can't, it can't be here. I got to figure something out. Well, once and the problem with keeping a boat at your house is it's just like every day. And you're like, I'll use it all the time. And then you'll no. just look at it and you'll be like, this is going to be a nightmare. We'll no. do it next weekend. And then that next weekend will come. And then you'll say, we'll take it out next weekend. Well, the good news is summer's almost over. <laughs> <laughs> So I won't even have to worry about that because I can just go ahead and just look at it. Just winterize it. and, and Winterize it and have it take up room in the driveway. You can still get out in September. I plan on it, actually. I've got I mean, a, you can uh, get out in October. You just won't be able to get wet. Like, you can just, on a nice day, you can yeah. take it cruising. But that's not a, it's not a great boat for cruising. Because you boat, do get wet. That's a boat for pulling up somewhere and swimming. Yeah, because you don't have a lot of space in it. No space. Yeah. It's a transporter. Yeah, but by yourself, if you want to take a day off and just take it up the road and put it in the James and go scooting around. Yeah, you could, but it's that thing's more like a gondola. Like it gets you from point A to B, and then you get out yeah. and do whatever it is, and then you get back in the gondola and you go back. It's a jet ski. It's, dude, it's every bit as fast as a jet ski. Too. Yeah. I was literally ripping 55 miles an hour with my brother-in-law and my, my father-in-law. That's pretty damn fast. Just 
flying in that thing. Just that's awesome. It's it's crazy. And then you can hit wake in it, and it it's a little bit of a plane. Yeah, because it, uh, it flies. Yeah, just a little. It lands harsh. Oh yeah, not a, not a great lander, <laughs> but a great beat you up pretty good. <laughs> Honestly, it felt a lot better than I thought it was going to. Yeah, I was impressed with that. Where'd the video come from? Who was taking the video? So my wife's dad was like, just on, we had rented a pontoon boat yeah. while we were down there, so we were out pontoon boating it up. By the way, I saw a picture of your wife driving that thing. Yeah, was she actually driving that? Yeah, she's trying to figure out how to do it. So we were out there, like, practicing. That's not going to be anything like your boat. No. <laughs> no. Even my boat. What's the rule I, on rentals? Do you, you don't need a license for a rental, right? It's like uh, it's just like if you're on a boat and you're fishing. like It transfers with the boat, not the driver? Like, if they rent you a fishing boat, I guess, maybe you can fish off of it. I don't it's, know how any of that works. Well, say you charter a fishing boat. Like, yeah. everyone on there now yeah, has yeah, a yeah, license. Yeah. It's the same thing with a rental boat. You have a license. That makes no sense. They didn't ask me for my license. They didn't check me on anything. They were like, flares are here. Life jackets. Channel 16's emergency. Yeah. They're like, here are the life jackets. Dude, they charge a fortune for those. Like, it, those make so much money at those marinas, dude. Yeah, he said that the whole reason he got it, some dude came in. It at, is cheaper than buying a boat, though. Like, I, yes. I would, look, I've rented a boat before. At Lake Anna, it's like three hundred dollars for the day or something. Yeah, so was, it's stupid expensive, but believe me, it's way cheaper than owning a boat. Yeah, so, I went on boatsetter dot com, found where there was a boat. It was in our little river. Yeah, I'm like all right, that marina was five minutes from our house. Yeah, and the boat's sitting in the water waiting for yep, you. They fuel it up. Do, they, yeah, when you come back, you have to fuel it back up. Yeah, and that's it. I was like, hell yeah! So rented a boat and we just tore that thing around. Yeah for a while but yeah they were on that boat at full tilt and then i just yeah right back no that thing that thing flies that's, that's awesome a, that's a fun little boat it's got an achilles heel i had to the, yeah it's tiny and doesn't hold anyone no 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 that's not it what's the it's got, a, it's got a, well here, let me take you a step so i went and got the boat okay from dude was and he honest with any and all flaws yeah, he never tried to hide anything from... Yeah. Well, not entirely. Uh-oh. But he didn't know about any and all flaws. So he had that thing. Last year, he ripped it, winterized it, had it tuned up for the season, bought another boat, never drove the boat. Yeah. Decided, wait, I don't need this boat. Yeah. Took it to a power sports place. Was like, hey, I'm going to consign this thing. They put it on the lot for like... Eighty five hundred dollars. Yeah, it just didn't wasn't selling. Yeah, and he was like, "Well, you're not advertising it." And they're like, "It's out there. It's yeah, advertising." Yeah, yeah. Anytime someone drives by, and he's like, "That's not how." So that's why he pulled it back. It in. Yeah, but so I was like, "Well, have you have you driven it this year? Like since you got it out?" And he was like, "No, but they water tested it to make sure that everything functions, yeah. and as long as it all functions, then yeah, they it, sell it." Yeah. But so it was functioning in the way a used boat should function, enough for them to sell it. Yeah. Not necessarily perfect. They started it up in the parking lot like it's a car. Maybe so. Throttled it. Yeah. But they and check the turn signals. They didn't drive it. There ain't no way to test it without. They put, said they water tested it. Like put it in the water, drove it around, pulled it back out. They might just hook the pump up to it and run water through it while they ran it. I believe him when he says they water well, No, it's a jet it. boat, so it's got to be in the water. Yeah, so they, they yeah. put it in, drove it around. We're like, all right, this thing's good to go. That's all I knew. So I went there. I looked it over. Everything looked good. I was like, fire it up for me. We fired it up. He was like, I don't want to leave it running too long. I was like, that's fair. Turned it off. You yeah. didn't drive it. No, brought that bitch home. Yeah. First time I drove it was after I backed it into the water, and I'm surrounded by yachts. Yeah. And I'm in this rinky-dink 15-foot jet boat that can't, doesn't steer under. Were you, know, you without, nervous as shit? Fuck yeah. Yeah, because you're like, everybody's looking at me. They know I know. You're thinking, they know I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now. I backed it up. into The first time I backed that boat up was on a boat ramp at a marina. Wow. Got it in the water. Only had to like pull forward twice. You didn't lose it. A lot of people, didn't lose a lot it. Of people let them slide off. Didn't lose it. Got it in the yeah. water. You know, 
took it. And then I got in there and I'm like, I haven't had any lessons in like how to use it. You got to put it in neutral before you can put it in forward or yeah. reverse, which would have been a really good pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> Say that now. That would have been a really good pro tip. So I get in the water and I'm like idling and I'm like trying to, and I know it needs power because it's a jet boat. Yeah. So I'm like turning it and like, it doesn't really want to turn much. And I'm like, it needs power, but I have, I have 10 feet to my right, 10 feet to the side. You this wanna, is a brick wall. Yeah. And this is boats. Yeah. I'm just like, this is, this is hairy at best. And then you don't want to give it too much power and slam into something. Hell no. Yeah. Cause I know there's no brakes. Yeah. So I'm just like, I'm, I'm eking it as best I can. And I, I, I managed to get around and I'm like, blah, 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 like bumping out. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, all right. And I'm realizing that if you give it a little juice, you know, it steers yeah. better, but now you're driving. Yeah. So now you're going a little faster and you're in a marina. So you don't want to be doing that. Yeah. It's surrounded by boats. It's no wake zone. Yeah. So it's like, it really does put you in a difficult situation because if you want to steer, you need to be, you need some power. Idle idle's pretty fucking worthless. Yeah. And you can turn the wheel, but but so I get in it and the first thing I notice, I can't turn the wheel. Uh oh. Like it's like seized. That's not so now good. I'm I'm idling around it. I am like literally putting every bit of strength I have. Like an old like, school car with no power steering. Far worse. Oh snap. Yeah, no, like that was that's the closest thing you can equate it to. Yeah. But it is far worse. So like, and then all of a sudden, like you like break it free, pop, and then it turns. Yeah. So now the thing's like just three sixteen. Yeah. And you're like son of a bitch, and then like you try, you're, you're pulling it back, but that takes forever, and then again, pop, whoop, and then it goes, and then it's like now you're three sixteen. The other, it's, it was all messed up, man. The steering was atrocious, and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what the hell was wrong, and so like, I'm putzing out. I'm trying to get this thing right, and I'm making like exaggerated turns in a very narrow alley. Yeah, at slow speeds, and I'm I'm making my way out. Are you cussing under your breath? I'm yet? just stressed. I'm just stressed, and finally I get out to the end of the alley, and I'm like, all right, I go over here, and like I finally get around, and I get to a dock, only to find out that it's a dock that like my father-in-law's on the other side of the marina, and he's going, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I can't come to you." And he's like. But you need to come over here. And I'm like, all right, yeah. all right, let me try. And so, like, I push off and I, I putz back around. I finally get him. And I'm like, okay, I did it. Like, I haven't hit anything. I've pulled Your up father-in-law's the, over there going, pull over. Pull over. Yeah. I'm already pulled over. I can't pull over any further. <laughs> so I finally get him in the boat and we go pulling out. And I'm like, I'm telling you, there's something really fucked up with this steering. Like, I can't get it to steer at all like the steering it wheel should take nothing it should be nothing nothing yeah i'm like the steering wheel is frozen in place and like i have to do everything in my power just to get it to move He's like this can't be right was anything back there like securing the no i couldn't but also i'm in the water now yeah yeah, yeah. you couldn't get out to look at it if you want i can't to. get out and do anything so i'm like finally he gets in i was like fair warning man i was like i can't steer and he's like yeah of course you can steer i was like grab the wheel and he's like He's like, what the hell? I was like, like I said, I can't really steer. And I was like, maybe it just, instead I'm thinking like power steering, right? Like, yeah, maybe it needs a warm up or something. No, it just needs to be going fast is my uh, logic. Oh, okay. My logic is at high speeds, it'll be very easy to turn. Yeah. Like a car that has no power steering. Yeah. So I'm like, let's get out of the marina and like goose it. And then I bet it steers. And I was thinking to myself, this is what Shell was referencing. He was telling me, you can't pull around in, in the marinas and like no one yeah, can dock yeah, yeah. them. I'm like, this must be it. There's like no power steering. So we get out and I'm finally clear and I'm like, goose that bitch. And then I'm like, nope. <laughs> Still don't really have mm. steering. Finally, I broke something loose and left turns were awesome. Like a jet ski. Turns left just like a jet ski. Woof, on a dime. Yeah, I can go anywhere I want, but if I turn it to the right Nothing. More than like a quarter turn, it hits a wall, and if you break through that wall, it stays frozen right. And then so you can't pop it back. Does it feel like something's catching or breaking or Yeah, it feels like there is definitely some like it's just 
Like it a catches, linkage could be wrong, busted or something? Yeah, like it all of a sudden just freezes, and then you have to, like, crack through a gear, and then it'll go. Which could be doing damage. Clearly it's doing damage. And then you can wrench it back to that point again, and then, and then you have to crack it. it through it again. So this became the game at 50. <laughs> <laughs> Where You weren't worried about fucking it up? Like, you weren't worried, like, I could be doing way more damage than... Yeah, all those things. Okay. But you just got your new boat, so you wanted to play with it. But I'm like, I got to get to the pontoon boats out there. I got to catch it. I got to go do my thing. Yeah. So I'm going through all of the paces, and then I'm getting it. And so I'm like, all right, let's go find an open spot. And I get out there, and I turn left. Because now I've learned if I don't turn right past the, the spot where it hitches, yeah, then I never have to break it back across that barrier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can just go to that barrier. Yeah. So... You can take big, wide, sweeping rights and tight lifts. Super wide. So we went way out to where it was open, and I was yeah. like, let's see what this thing can do on a right turn. Yeah. So I turn it to the right, and I'm like, it's it's just barely turning right. So I'm like, all right, I'm going through the, the brake. Yeah. I was like, pop, broke it through the brake, and now it's still just this super wide right. And we're going all the way around, and now we're coming towards the shoreline. Yeah. And I'm like, I can't make it turn anymore, so I have to break it back through and then hard left yeah. and just, like, spin out of where I was. But so we finally get to the beach, pull it up to the beach, and I'm like, the girls are like, I want to ride. Everyone, everyone wants to ride. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know that I can bring you out in this because... I can't turn right. Yeah. Like, it's not an ambi-turner. It's basically Zoolander. It's funny. You said, <laughs> you were like, you, I was like, it doesn't turn right. And you were like, what, like Zoolander? It's funny because I'm pretty sure that boat's name is Zoolander. Because <laughs> I had said that on the beach. I was like, it's kind of like Zoolander. Yeah. And it's all neon and bright. Yeah, it's yeah, Zoolander. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely Zoolander. Wake what, me up What's this, a boat go, made for go. ants? Yeah. It, it fits the yeah, Zoolander yeah. so many ways. I just don't remember, could Zoolander not turn right or not turn left? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Because it's Zoolander. It is. So this bitch doesn't doesn't want to run. How broken hearted were the was the family? I mean, they were all just like, this sucks, because I'm over there now. Now that I've got it pulled up on the beach, I'm underneath it. I'm futzing with it. I have no idea how a jet boat turns. Yeah. But I'm learning on the fly. And well, and you're hoping there's something like egregious, like you can feel or see something that's like, oh, this isn't right. Like, and this, I can feel, or it's ride. not symmetrical. So you're like, oh, this one on the left's fine. This one is wonky on the right. Like, that's. And I'm just looking yeah. for like the the rock that's lodged there at the right. You're doing what every dude does when their car's not starting. You just pop the hood and you stand there and you're like, something's gonna jump out and show me that it's not. Well, it's yeah. not working right. So I'm literally underneath it. And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I right, turn it to the left, like left. I'm like, turn it to the right. And I'm like, yeah, it barely turns right. Like, all right, left. Yeah, right. All right. I'm playing with it, feeling the linkages, understanding You're opening it. your fridge at 12 o'clock at night, hoping to find something that was, wasn't in there the previous four times you looked Exactly in there. right. I opened it up. I was hey, like, let's try turning it to the left again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Back to the right. Mm, yeah. Still, still busted. Same. Still busted. Still the same. So I got in there, though. I, I was up front now. Now I'm watching the steering wheel, and I'm seeing what it connects to. And I'm just tracing everything that I can reach without tools, because I have no tools. Yeah. So I'm like just... And they wouldn't do you much good anyway. <laughs> but I could at least start fidgeting more. Yeah. Get further into the, the hull. I don't yeah. know. But I'm like playing with everything. Finally, I find like a cable... That's linking from the steering and coming out, and there's like grease that's like pouring out of a section of it, uh -huh. like just out. And so I'm like, "Ooh, grease shouldn't be out." Yeah, it's supposed to be so, inside. So I take it and start jamming it in and rubbing the cable, and I'm like, like yeah. greasing up the cable, which does get rid of the big hitch. Okay. So I'm like, it's the cable. There's something in the cable. There's a linkage in there somewhere that's not that's operating not feeling, properly. Yeah. Not feeling right. So I'm like. Lubing up everything I can with what little bit of grease I've found. Yeah. And I just keep doing that on every every spot where I see the cable go into housing. Yeah. And just start doing that. That's all I can think of. So then I'm like, I'm not fucking with this anymore. I'm not going to be sad. And, like, and my wife's like, return it, return it. And I'm like texting the dude. I'm like, I'm like, yo, what do you know about the steering? And he's like, steering works fine. And I'm like, well, I can't get it in gear. And the reason I can't get it in gear... <laughs> No one told me to put it in neutral. So uh -huh. I'm headed towards the shore where they are. Yeah. And then I think I can just slam it in reverse. Uh-huh. So I've got it still gassed. 
and I go to slam it in reverse and it won't move. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I beast fuck it one time. Blah! Yeah. It turns out that it's designed where you have to go to neutral before you can switch yeah. anything out of gear. But nobody told me that. Kind of so, like your car won't let you just slam it. Your automatic car won't let you just... Yeah. yeah. But on a boat, I literally can just slam it and change the thing. <laughs> like, like, you know, like you kind of just screw with it. Yeah. But so I'm like, I can't get it to stop. Like as I'm flying towards the mm-hmm. shore. So you I didn't li- think they at least put it in neutral? I, I couldn't go to neutral till it's... You have to come... The gas needs to come back before you can... Neutral should be in the middle. No, forward. it's not allowed to have gas while it's in neutral. Yeah. Like, you have to pull the throttle back and then go from forward to neutral or to reverse. Oh. The gas has to come up, but no one told me that. Okay. So I got the gas on. I'm trying to put it in neutral, and it won't go. Gotcha. It's so only yanking, yanking, yanking as I'm going towards the shore. I'm thinking of your normal boat where the throttle is the gas. Like, you push it forward to go There's forward. There's two, two different okay. thrusters. One is forward, neutral, and reverse. The other one is just power. Power. Turns out power is everything. Always cut the power. Then you can do whatever you want. Then you can fire it back up. Yeah. That little tip would have saved me a lot of hassle. Yeah. I'm flying towards the shore. And I'm like, oh, shit. I can't get it to, like, slow down. So I I do drop it at that point. But at that point, I'm getting close. Yeah. So right before I drop it, I give it the one turn it has left. Mm -hmm. And I pull the kill switch. And I fucking 360 spiral into the beach. Nice. <laughs> but slowly, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I took enough off of it with my, with my maneuver. Damaged. No, I, like, I pulled in. I and was, you can ride those things onto the beach. Like, they're yes. not. They're it not. actually probably looked super cool the way I did it, like a, like a mad pro. Yeah. Because I, I, I turned it, shut everything, and it literally 360s and then nose, like, right up onto the beach perfectly. Nice. And so I was like, if they saw that, they're going to think I'm a badass. But I was in full panic mode. It was, it was crazy. But I saved it. All good. So then we're futzing with it. And I'm like, like I said, I was like, I refuse for this to like ruin my day. Uh-huh. Like I'm going to just. It's easier said than done. Yeah. But so I went about and hung out. And then when they were leaving, I was like, all right. And my, my father-in-law was like, well, I'm not riding back on that. Like, take, take your brother-in-law. Do you feel not safe? No, but when I was going 55 well, miles yeah, I mean, an hour. But you can him, ride it without going 55. No, you can't. Okay. You know what I'm saying, though. You're I mean, out there. You're out there. You're having fun. No, I'm with you. You could. And I was saying, if we have to putz it back, we putz it back. Yeah. But so I get my brother-in-law in there. And like we're like, let's go out here. And, and that little bit of grease is allowing it to now turn very slowly to the right without yeah. a hitch. And I still got badass left turns. So at that point, he and I are like, all right, like we can, we can turn left. And it turns out that if you put it in neutral and throw it in reverse and turn it to the right just a little and then goose it, it turns to the right sharp because it's in reverse. Uh-huh. So we figured out how to work around not yeah. having good right turning. So like we were just doing all kinds of like fun stuff. But so he and I were like, well, we should tear this up. So we, we blasted all over the place. Like we had a, we had a good time in it. But then when the family like, what the hell was that? I thought we couldn't do these little my, things. My daughter was like, so you just wouldn't let me on the boat, but you guys went all over the Yeah, world. yeah. Fly in my mouth. Oh, my gosh. It's like He's, a running theme now. What the hell? <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was, it was adventurous, to say the least. So what's the next step? You taking it out this weekend? No, I bought a cable. Oh, you did? Yeah, I got it's It's here. So you're just going to try to fix it yourself? No. Okay. I found it. Because this is boat ownership, right? Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to just throw money at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I found a dude out in the country out here. So I, like, reached out to the Scandals boys. And yeah. Was like, 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 anyone know anything about this? And, of course, one of them. I got a buddy has got the exact same boat. And he's got some guy out in the country that works on boats on the side. Also owns some kind of, like, boat yard yeah, somewhere yeah, yeah. else. I'm like... He could work on that thing, no problem. So I ordered the part, called the dude. Dude's like, absolutely. You know it's that part. Did you talk to somebody that like... No, I just, I've done enough. I've been in there enough to know that uh-huh. regardless... That part needs to be fixed. That's a $150 cable that runs the whole length and is the entire steering. Yeah. There may be something else in there. Yeah. But this guy was like, there's always there's two things, man. It's either this cable or 
sometimes it just falls off the track a little. Mm -hmm. And if it, if it falls off this one little hook, then it'll turn better one way than the other. And I was like, that sounds exactly like what I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, buy the $150 part, because if this guy finds out it is that part. Yeah, then you're behind the eight ball. Then he's going to have it for another week. Yeah. While he waits for the part. So I just ordered the part, and I could just return the part. You already have it. I already have it. When you, when you get in the boat work on, and how long is it going to take? Tomorrow. And he said, he'd oh. have, he said he'd have it back to me by before the following weekend. Nice. And I'm out of town all next week anyway, so I was like, you do you. Yeah. Go figure it out. So I'm going to get it worked on. Nice. So true boat ownership. Yeah. Driven it once, and it's already in the shop. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a boating guy now. That's right. I've, you are. You've done all the boating things. Pop my cherry. All you got to do is sell it now, and then you've, and then I've done then it. you've run the full circle. I've done the full yeah. thing. Well, no. Nah. It hadn't left. It hadn't stranded you somewhere yet. I'll get there. Y you will. I'll get there. You got to take it out more than once. <laughs> yeah. And then the other neat trick was was that when he dropped it off, he was like, "Yeah, it was all clean." Apparently, they just left it outside with no cover oh, on it. Oh man! For like the summer, yeah. trying to sell it. So when I got it, it was full of leaves and yeah. bullshit. So I spent all day Sunday power washing, cleaning things out, getting down inside all of the little In the crevices. crevices. Yeah. P taking out all the things that were in there that were covered in mud now, power washing all of those. Yeah. Every inch of it has been cleaned. Yeah. That bitch is, she looks great. Just nice. doesn't, she just doesn't turn right. Well, and you're going to fix that. I'll fix that. But I want that fixed before I put the kids in it. Yeah. I and, want it, and that's fair. I want to genuinely be able to yeah. drive down. Do you have life jackets and all that stuff? Everything you need for it? No. So you, you need that. Yeah. Clearly. Have you registered it? It's all registered. It's insured. Everything's good. Okay. Except Got the, the stickers and everything on yeah, the bow? Everything's, okay. everything's good. I just don't have that, the, the life jackets. Or a, or a, a fire extinguisher. Yeah, it needs one of those. It's got, a, it's got the thing that holds the fire extinguisher. But it's missing. But it's not in there. Yeah. I need a fire extinguisher, life jackets. A throwable, probably. I've got a throwable. Okay. Got an anchor. Got some rope. Yeah. Like, I've got all this. I don't have any of those little, little like, uh, things that hang off the side. Bumpers? Like, yeah, I don't have yeah. any bumpers. But I don't know if I'm going to get any bumpers. They're 10 bucks each, usually, at oh. Bass Pro. I mean, yeah, I figure you need two. Yeah. Hang them off the cleats. Yeah. Just so you can lop it up on something. Yeah. You want those, because it'll if you do put it at a dock for any time, you don't want it beating up against the yeah. dock. But I've already learned how to flush out the engine. I've learned <gasps> how to check. I've basically learned a lot when I got home. I, like, did all the maintenance I could do. Yeah. But I don't want to go through the hassle of, like, changing out the plugs because I'm about to winterize it. Yeah. It's all going to happen at the end of this, end of this winter anyway. Yeah. So we're going to get through. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get two good trips out of it. Yeah. I've got a camping trip coming up that's on the water. Oh, are you taking it down there? So I'm going to drag it down there. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to that or not. I'm still on the fence. That dude has a boat ramp on his yeah. property and a pier. So I'm like. And it's on the cove. So like it's flat water over there. I hope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to take it down there. There's no waves over and there. And then I would like to at least once get it out on the river with the kids. Yeah. And then, you know, let's winterize it. Yeah. Let's, get, <laughs> let's call it a season. Yeah. Let's find somewhere where I can just pay to keep it. Yeah. It sounds, per it's, I'm loving to be a boat owner. It's the best. It's just the best. I'm just stroking It's like checks. all toys. It's like your Miata that you hardly drive or like people that buy campers are like, I'll be camping every weekend. It's like you went on four camping trips this year. That's like, right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just. You know what of, you're getting into, but yeah. that's why I bought a boat that I could pay cash for. Yeah. Versus having a payment on top of all that. That yeah. was, that was the big appeal. My wife's like, it's so small. I was like, I told you it was going to be small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, but it's small now that I see it. And I'm yeah, because like, your wife wanted a party boat that she could invite all her friends out on, and you could drive them around, and they could drink mimosas and she'll Bloody get, Marys. We'll get there. Yeah. But I need to learn some basics. But the problem is that boat's not going to... I know Shell said that that boat operates like no other boat, so it's not like... Oh, I know how to drive this 15 foot jet boat. Now I can jump on a 30 foot pontoon. Like, you're, that's not how it works. A different boat. But, yeah. I can tell that's you. That's like that saying, I, this, this metro, I can just crush it. I can drive this metro anywhere. Now here's a, a here's a, no, here's a 250 diesel. Yeah. That's, you know, on eight inch lifts. And with, like, yeah, I know I drive that too. Like, uh, do you? Like, I can tell you this, though, after driving the jet boat and then getting on the pontoon. 
It does help because well, everything. It, does, it doesn't hurt because it's like driving. It is like driving a golf cart and then transitioning to a car. You still understand the basics of. Yeah, it driving. definitely helped. Like I was, I was docking that pontoon boat like a boss. Yeah. Throwing in reverse, rob, yeah. drifting in. I was like, all right, I'm pretty good at this. Yeah. Jet boat, you just slam it into the dock. It's something <laughs> under five. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's perfect. Just, and kill the engine. So kill when the it engine do, when you. So panic. when it does slam, no it steering. doesn't keep going. <laughs> That's right. In the pontoon boat, I only ran the propeller through the muck twice. Nice. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> Definitely had a couple of those where I'm like, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's, it shit gets shallow near the shore. It does. It's harder to have. It does. I, I became a big, uh, a big fan of trim. Yeah. By the end, it was mm-hmm. great. I was trimming it up. I was spinning into things. Yeah. But like, it's like reading, reading about it, and then in practice. Yep. Now I've gotten very good. I'm like looking at it. And I'm like trim up, do this. Like, but I had to learn. I like learning on a rental. Dude, like at my lake, right out. So like, we take the tiki, tiki. Uh, picnic table out to the middle and it's like waist deep out there and then like you can walk for hundreds of yards and still waist deep and you're in the middle of the lake yeah then like we were walking i was walking to the boys the other day we were walking around the middle of the lake and like i saw white caps cresting in the middle of the lake i was like something's over there there's tree stumps out there at surface level like so if you don't know if you don't know they're yeah. there and you're on a boat uh, and or a jet boat and you just come screaming through the middle of that lake you're gonna find a surprise I definitely saw some of those where I'm like head on a swivel as I'm driving. And all of a sudden you just see like six inches of something sticking up. Yep. And you're like, what the hell is that? And you avoid it or slow down and go around it. And look, it's a tree. Yep. Floating along. Yeah. That's lake life right there. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun. So yeah. Boat owner. Congrats. Yeah. Checking all the boxes. Ready for a deli? Yeah, man. Is it deli time? Yeah. Oh, Oh, the the deli's deli's behind you. Remember how I told you I didn't want a boat, so I got the tiki right? And then flashback to literally last year this time in August, I took the tiki out and I got a ticket on it. And then I had to go to court and the judge let me off because it was such a ridiculous thing. And I finally got registered and all this stuff. Well, I took it out last weekend for the first time and I didn't put the stickers on it because I didn't know how to attach the stickers to the wood freaking dot, the wood, you know... Okay, is, okay. But I, I, had, I had everything with me, and I had my license, and I had the vest and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, I had this one out. You want a little um, more of that? No, that's good. Um, so we're sitting out there, like we always do, sitting out in the middle of the lake, and sure as shit, conservation police are out there, oh, right yeah. in front of my cove, right between where I'm sitting and right between where I need to get to. And we've been there all day. We've been there three hours. And I'm like, oh, I see him looking through the binoculars. I'm like, here we go. This is they're gonna they're gonna come at me again. Now, mind you, pontoon boats with that are definitely overloaded are going by me, and I'm just looking at like these people have been drinking. They got too many people in the boat. I know they don't have enough vests. They're not worried about them. They're worried about my eight by ten floating tiki. And and then all of a sudden we start seeing some some what looked to be like. My kids thought they were water guns. Saw a couple pool noodles with, like, handles off the end of them from a distance floating by us. And we're like, oh, shit, somebody lost something. And I'm like, what is it? And the kids are like, I think it's water guns. So the the conservation police pull up, and they pick one up, and they go pick the other one up. And they're like, the yellow, they're like, are these yours? I'm like, no, nah, I have no idea. Then they kind of go around this island, and I see them pick another one up. Then they tear off. So... I'm like, well, now's our time to get back in without getting hassled. So let's just start heading in. So yeah, we, sure. So we start heading in. They're busy. They're busy. So then we go, and I go up. We, I tie it up. I go up to my outdoor shower, and I'm taking an outdoor shower. And I can look over my little cover, my little privacy curtain, and I see them down in my cove out right at the end of my dock doing circles. I'm like, these MFers are just like. They came back for you. They're like all about me so i I yell at them for while i'm in the shower i'm like do y'all need something and i can't hear them yelling back i was like just wait there i'll be down so i i finish my shower get out naked show what's up (laughs) so i get down there and the guy jumps off onto my neighbor's dock and he's like i'll walk around i was like you can't really get there from here it's a hassle what what's up man 
He's like, are you sure those weren't your noodles? I'm like, no, dude. I'm like, yeah, no. What? Like, what is there fucking heroin in these or I, something? Well, so I'm like, no, dude. And I tell him what I do for a living. And I'm like, I'm not lying to you, dude. I'm like, well, what? I don't even. It's what's the problem? He goes, well, they're for fishing. You know, they they got these wooden dowels on them and they tie lines. Oh, lines they're illegal and fishing. Then, well, so I said, is that illegal? I go, I'm not a fisherman. I'm not, I, I literally don't own a fishing rod. Like, my kids do. They love to fish. I was like, I don't know. He goes, no, well, it's not illegal, but you have to be by it. And you guys were the only people that were by it. I'm like, I've been sitting in that same spot for over three hours, dude. Like, boats. He goes, did you see anybody? I go, see anybody? I said, boats all go day. all day just passing us. Like, and they, I, and they just came floating down the lake because our lake is technically a river like yeah, water it's got flows a through it yeah. yeah and i'm like no dude and he goes well while we're talking you don't have i said oh here we go i i, pu- I had the envelope with me i brought it down i said here it is dude i said i said i got a ticket on this thing one year ago i said this is the first day i've taken it out what do you want me to do i said i don't know how to affix this to the wood well you need to have it here 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 i was like and how do i do that on the picnic table yeah on the picnic table he's like well, you probably should get a piece of plastic or metal and, you know, put the stickers on and put them on both sides. And, and I'm just like, the whole reason I didn't want a boat is so I wouldn't have to deal with this shit. And now I'm dealing with this shit. Like, you I should have just well bought a, a Donzi, boat. baby. And I paid more for my, for my Tiki boat than you did for your boat. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> my Tiki turns left. So does mine. <laughs> or mine turns right, too. Oh, mine does not. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just like... Really? This is like, this is what you guys are focused on. Like, and then the more I thought about it, the more pissed I got because I'm like, the Tiki has no, like with our vest and our cooler and the chair and like, there's no room. I'm like, you think this is my end game to pull in the middle, throw these noodles out? What am I going to do with the fish? Like, I don't have a, I don't have a, a, a massive Yeti to put it in. God, like, joke's on you. By this the whole way, thing's alive well. But yeah, by the way. My kids are out here. I can't noodle fit, you know, pull noodle fish and like see them and then take my, my tiki won't even get out of its own goddamn way. Like, yeah, the fish should be gone. Like, I'm just like, come on, man. You can't even get to them. The fish just drag your noodle. (coughs) If I hook that fish up to my tiki, it'd probably pull me around. Oh, maybe that was your end game. (laughs) You try to get like six fish, six fish power boat, six big catfish, just like mushing dogs, just pulling me around. I'm just like, man, for real, like this. And you wonder why you get a bad rap, dude. Like, it's just ridiculous. It's like, what? What's the? What's the end game? I am picturing you now with a long stick with a string and a hot dog at the end, and all the catfish going after it, and you're just steering yourself around. (laughs) That would be awesome. But I did. So the guy was cool. The guy I talked to was nice, but I was like, really? So then I like, while I had him there, I'm like, so while we're talking, my kids like to fish. What's the laws on that? Like, can they fish from the dock? Can they fish from here? He's like, well, if they're under 60, you know, like he helped me straighten some stuff out, but I'm like, your website sucks. You know, y'all are, y'all are bullies. Y'all aren't helpful. You're just out here yeah. to write tickets for like taxpayers. I like, like that. He fell for your trick. You floated out there. You didn't put any of the stuff on there. Then you got him to come back in so he can answer your questions. <laughs> yeah. It's how they used to do things. You know, you, you got it. So today I had to go to, today I went to Home Depot. I had to buy the stickers. It was $16 worth of letter stickers, you know, mailbox numbers and stickers. Then I had to, I, I bought a piece of wood. I didn't want to buy wood. I couldn't find a piece of metal that looked safe or a piece of plastic that would do the work. I don't think you want metal work. on there, cut you and stuff. That's what I was worried about. I was looking for a flat piece of plastic of a certain dimension that i couldn't find so i bought a piece of pressure treated wood i'm gonna have to paint it then i gotta screw it then i gotta hope that the stickers stick to that wood and then i'm gonna like lacquer over them so hopefully that'll help like seal it in there yeah if you lacquer it it, it's not going anywhere but it's just in the ass i know it's it's a it's a huge pain in the ass like so even your tiki look see boat ownership yeah oh yeah putting money into it yeah and it's like I got to carry batteries down to the dock to take out with me because I I don't have power down there. So I can't just plug them in. I got to bring them back up to the house. And they're, and now because I've been stranded out there with a dead battery, I take two batteries. So like, of course, 
you know, it's, it, it, yeah, it's it's literally a boat. Like it's work. It's a pain in the ass. And well, welcome to the club. And it doesn't hold as many people as I would like. And it, you know, it's so you got the same boat as me. exactly. Yeah, actually, I could fit more on. <laughs> I can go faster. Yes, you can. This is literally the only trade off. Dude, you got to try this. I'm dying to oh, know yeah, what yeah. you... Oh, yeah, yeah, What do we have here? So this is... Chica? Pariah Brewing Company. Chica Hard Seltzer. Smells pretty good. Now, Fruity. this thing is crazy. It's got, like, corn and pineapples Pineapple. on it. It's a cool-looking can, though. So this stuff is very... So I've had some now. This is very interesting. This is our version... Uh, okay, what you're holding... Is our ode to Peruvian Chica Morada. Our version follows tradition with the use of Peruvian purple corn, pineapple, lime, sugarcane natural, cinnamon, and allspice before undergoing fermentation. Post fermentation, we add back some monk fruit to impart just a bit of sweetness to balance everything out. All natural as well as gluten free and vegan. We hope you like it as much as we do. 5% alcohol. It's a hard seltzer. Where'd you get it from? I've never seen that. That can is... I hadn't either. And my brother-in-law had them down at the, uh, down at the river. Uh-huh. And one of them ended up in my cooler. And I was like, don't mind if I do. It's got cinnamon sticks on it, lime, pineapple, ears of corn. I mean... This is a weird seltzer. It's got a hint of sour that goes away after yep. the very first sip. That allspice finish is nice. I enjoy that. That allspice and that little bit of cinnamon. Yes. This cuts, takes, it cuts that tart. This takes on a lot of like fall type flavors, but yet it's like the lemon and all of that is still yeah. very hard seltzer and yeah. like summery. But this hard seltzer. It doesn't taste seltzer to me. Like it's it not. It tastes like a cider. It does. Or, a, uh, or like a sour beer. Somewhere between a sour beer and a cider. Yeah. Not hard seltzer at all. Like, if you didn't say hard seltzer, you I, would wouldn't never. Have thought, I wouldn't have thought no. that. No, this is... It's a really cool-looking pink, like pink-purple. Like, it's pretty neat color to it. This is a weird drink. I mean, I, I like that they're going after some weird Peruvian Chica Morada. That's their... I, I, I do wish I knew, knew what that was so I could, like, compare and contrast, like... Because yeah. I have no idea what that, those words are. Like, I wish I could say, oh, I've had one of those before. This thing's wild. The allspice yeah. and the cinnamon with the pineapple. It's like, this doesn't know if it's summer or fall. This is literally Labor Day. This, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this thing takes you on a ride. This takes you on a ride. Because sure. this thing punches you with sour. Yeah, but then it kind of mellows out. But immediately, it starts changing. It changes from... Front to middle to back. Like, it's all different. It goes from sour to fruity to fall. Yeah. This is basically the ride from Labor Day to Thanksgiving. It starts with... um. This is an 80-degree Halloween. <laughs> it starts with, uh, with the tart of, like, a margarita on uh, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. 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 Goes with a little bit of hard seltzer and some pineapple yeah, for yeah, summer, and yep. then finishes with a campfire. Uh, it's weird, right? Uh, that's, a weird, the that's, a, that's a really weird drink. So, in in full transparency, I had one in the middle of the night, but it was my last drink of the night after like drinking for eleven hours. Yeah. So, so you were confused. I remember thinking to myself, "Wow, there's a lot going on there. That's fun." <laughs> that's all that's it i can see why you thought that honestly but now that i'm not you know shit canned and i'm drinking it i'm like wow there's a lot going on that's fun it's literally the exact same do you want me to go first you can if you've if you've had enough to uh know what's up i uh i like this i like this a lot i might even love this Ooh. But that being said, it's a tart front, and I love tart. I love the sours. But if you don't, you might not like this. But I would still tell you to try it because the tart. I, I the, don't like The tart's tart. just the front. Yeah. And then it goes way different, way off the rails. And I think it finishes better than it starts. And I'll give this a four. I really like this. Wow. 
four. I like it. I think it's delicious. I think I would I like I would like to drink that. I think in the world of seltzers, it's not a seltzer. But in the world of seltzers, that's a four and a half. In the world of seltzers, the flavor is amazing with the sour. Yep. The little bit of sweet, but it's monk fruit, so it's not like it's a sugary sweet. No. It's very different. But like the corn. I don't. I don't taste any corn. I don't know what that is. There is something there. There's if you really think about in your mouth, there is almost like a like a sweet corn. It's like a weird tortilla. Yeah, it's like weird. A tortilla chip. But then it's got that allspice and that cinnamon mixed with that pineapple. Mm-hmm. This is dope. So you say four and a half in the salsa world, but what's the deli ranking? It can't be lower than a four. I, I can't argue a four and a half. I'm damn sure not going to do that. Like, I have it at a four, and, and four and a half is not out of the realm of possibilities. Because the sour might offend some people. Yes. I'm going to take the lowered rung. This is a four across the board. That's... That and your one, your one issue was my one issue. That but you, you but might not like the sour, but but it's awesome. But it's awesome. That's I like a, that was a weak ass ring. That's a deli. That's a deli right there. That is so good. So please, I don't know where you get this. Chicha, C H I C H A, Chicha, Chicha, yeah, from Pariah or, Brewing or, Company, Chicha. I don't know. It's ch e ch oh. <laughs> I don't know. I would like to know your you guys' thoughts. Like when again, now that it's just back to the two man OG, like I miss having a third and fourth palette here. Hey, maybe that's why we're the palette house. Obviously. You didn't know I that. Never thought of that. That's why oh. Yeah, because we have exquisite taste. Yeah. No, but seriously, like if you happen to come across this. Let us know, because I would like to be validated, obviously. Yeah, like, this looks like it's a 80s, early 90s party on a can. Chicha. And also kind of like a, like a Native American North uh, Southwestern theme. This comes out of Baltimore, Maryland, so I got a funny feeling that the uh, Northern Virginia, Maryland types are going to find it easier. Mm-hmm. But I will be traveling... In that direction a little bit, I am going to go out of my way to find this. I nice. want this I want this stocked from now until Thanksgiving at my house. Nice. That's gonna be my goal. Cases wow. of this and just four packs in every cooler. Just so people can try it. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, I like it. I really thought and it your was your brother in law got this? Yeah. That's awesome. I really thought this was a cider. He's got good taste. I really did think it was a cider. I told my wife. You told me it was a cider. I told my wife, we're trying a cider tonight. Yeah. She was like, that's great. Oh, can I have a beer? Yeah, man. I, if you didn't tell me that was a sparkling, no, a uh, seltzer. Uh, seltzer. Or a cider. I still, I, to me, that still comes across like, if you had told me that was out of Strange Ways Brewing, I've been like, yep, you got that. That's That's exactly where that's from. What uh, what kind of beer you want there, boss? Oh, one of those new light beers from Miller. Ah, I see those. Dude, I gotta get this. I gotta get the picture of this one for the episode. Yeah, we're uh, we're fucking up by taking pictures instead of talking, but uh, we got it done. I had to do it. Yeah. I wanted to be in the picture, but I yeah. wanted it to be happening in the moment. That's how psyched I am. Like, that's my favorite, <laughs> my favorite beer. Well, oh, I learned something about my dog. Which one? You have two dogs. No, I don't. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I love that you're standing by that. <laughs> I've got one dog. Yeah. Well, one and a half. So The other one is something. The fact that it doesn't hear really doesn't help the cause, you know? No. He's cuter. No, he's not. Those are not cute dogs. French bulldogs are cute. No. AF. No. Yeah. And you saying AF doesn't seal the deal. 
No, well, they're inbred as fuck. Your other dog's way better looking. No, he's the opposite of inbred. He's all mudded exactly. up. Exactly. Gross. <laughs> Gross. All of his parts are where they belong. Oh, yeah. It's disgusting. He can hear and see. Showing off. No one wants that. <laughs> no one wants that. Just so that, that dude loves, loves water. Oh, okay, yeah. Now, he's never been in salt water. Ah. I didn't realize there was a big difference. I mean, I get it. Yeah. But I didn't realize there'd be a big difference to the dog. Mm-hmm. He, so, my dog loves fresh water. He goes out there and he swims and he drowns drinks a, a bunch little. of it. <laughs> yeah, he drinks a bunch of it and he drowns a little. Yeah. And then he throws up one good time. Yep. And then he's dialed in after that. Yep. But he needs to swim until he pukes. Yeah. Where he's just swallowing water and then he pukes everywhere. And then he's like, oh, okay, too That's much water. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Don't want that. Not supposed to do that. And then he pulls it together. So we threw him on the pontoon boat, ran him out to a beach, let him go. Yeah. Go, boy, go. Wrigley's tearing it up, swimming. Would you, did you have the other dog with you? That son of a bitch. My wife got a life vest with a shark fin on its Oh, back. my God. So he was running around. He'd be out in the water, and you'd just see a shark fin. Did he swim? <laughs> no. Yeah, he just was like. But he would go down deep enough where you just see the head of a dog, and he'd yeah. be standing there with a shark fin. Again, cute as fuck. <laughs> But not a real dog. Basic. Yeah. AF. Yeah, basic bitch. Yeah. But the big dog, that thing's strong, you know? And so he's out there swimming, and he's tearing it up, and he's, he's going out and swimming around the boat and coming back yeah. in and tearing up and down the beach and having a blast and puking, <coughs> you know, ingesting yeah. tremendous amounts of salt water. Hold on. We're, y'all were in the northern neck. Yeah. So, like, brackish water more so. Uh, you say that, but like brackish water, salt water. Yeah, yeah well, yeah. You know it, what I mean? It has salt in you it. You can't drink yeah, it. Yeah. You know, the fish are different. Yeah. Jellyfish are like, this works. Yeah, that's the Crabs that's are like, the, this works. The one knock on the on the rivers. Mm-hmm. Well, that and God showing up and tearing out, tearing your pier away. And, yeah. Because hurricanes come right back, right up through there, mm-hmm. too. But uh, I didn't realize there would be such a difference to the dog. And so he's like, he's like tearing it up. He's having a blast. And then he gets back on shore, and all of a sudden he's like, like we're sitting there, and he's hanging out with all of us. All of a sudden he's like, Whoop! and like, like hunches his back and like drops a deuce right in the water. And I'm like, hell yeah, water babies, that's funny. <laughs> like I enjoy it. An aqua that's, dump, as they yeah. call it on uh, Shoresy. Yeah, so like I like it. I was yeah. like, good for you. So then he goes like running around. He's tearing around, swimming. He's doing his thing again. And then he has another shit. And this one's a little more uh, loose, yeah, if you will. And then he's not swimming as much. He's kind of hanging out on shore. He's still running around, having a blast. And then all of a sudden, he's standing next to my sister-in-law. Uh-oh. And he just projectile vomits out of his ass. Oh, like, my God. Like, like boosh. <laughs> and I'm like, he's like, he's like. Oh no! <laughs> Someone peed in my pants. Like, please tell me she wasn't uh, shrapnel. She, she goes, "Oh my gosh!" She jumps out of the way, and this dude leaves a fucking crater, like in the sand, like whoosh. Six inches are just dug out, six inches wide, six inches down. He laser beams like projectile out of his ass, and I'm like, I'm like, oh damn, like that's rough. That one's no good. And then. He's like, I'm like, all right, well, he got it out of him. He'll be fine. And then he's standing next to, like, like my wife, and he's, like, walking along with her. Oh, and no. all of a sudden, as he's walking, this lime green straight, like, laser beam of water is just shooting out of his ass as he's walking. And it stinks to high hell. And it's like spraying. And when I mean spraying, I mean it's a four to five foot stream out of his ass just straight out. Oh, my God. Of, of lime green water. Are y'all worried yet? Now we're up. Yeah, now we are. yeah, yeah. So now he's walking. And then you'd be like, Wrigley, stop. And then he would turn like, and just what? <laughs> and now he's got this like, this like five foot projectile, like perfect laser beam he's of just jerky. Stra- he's just strafing people. Strafing them. <laughs> big time. Like I couldn't have recreated this with a hose. It was amazing. And every time you go, Wrigley, no, 
He goes, what? <laughs> yeah. And then turns to address the person who said no. And he's like, he's like, what's going on? Like, I like the fact that you or anyone else is like, hey, dog that is actively in the process of shitting. Let me tell you no. Like yeah. You're going to cinch yeah. and stop doing what you're doing. I can't even cut off a pee without exactly. burning. You know? And he's like, he's like, I don't think you understand people. Yeah. But he looks at you like, I'm hearing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to acknowledge you. But so every he doesn't time, even. Know, he probably didn't even know what's going on behind him. He like doesn't. He's got no control of his he doesn't body because he's walking. Yeah, and just doing it. It's just evacuating. It's just, it's just falling out of him it's, with no, force. No. There is. <laughs> there are muscles at work here at the way this is yeah. coming out. It is. I'm not exaggerating. Four feet is too short. Five feet's probably it's somewhere in there. Yeah. Straight before it starts arching down. Wow. And he's just turning and looking and he's like, what's up? <laughs> and, like, and he still wants to like go about his thing. Well, then this becomes a common theme. And so like, you'll be hanging out with him. Like, you're okay, buddy. You're okay, buddy. And like people will be standing next to him and not even know. Yeah. And I'll be like, steer what? clear. He's shooting. <laughs> And he'd be just firing off. And he oh was doing this gosh. every few minutes. He couldn't stop firing, firing, firing. It was brutal. So, and then every once in a while. like So he, he would, ingested a lot of. A lot. Did he, did he do the puke thing? No, he kind of gagged a little. Yeah. And then the salt water comes out the other end. I didn't wow. know this. Fresh water, he pukes. Was well, he dehydrate? Did you get, did, was he drinking fresh water we at some were point? We were fresh water in front of him, and he's like, uh-uh. Uh-uh, No yeah. chance. That's I some know of that what, trick water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know what that is. Yeah. No thanks. And there were times where he would actually then, like, hunch up and, like, put his ass down. And when he would do that, he would blow out these craters. There were craters all up and down the beach where he would oh have to stop God. and spray. And then sometimes he'd get embarrassed, and he'd go off in the brush. Yeah. And just fire around in the brush. Dude, so we instituted a rule of, like, we can't leave because it's a 15-minute ride back. Yeah. We need to get to the point where he can go 10 minutes without a projectile vomit. Yeah, you were, hands. like, stranded there. So I would start the timer. All right, go. He never got past five minutes. Oh, no. So, like, we played this game for, like, an hour. Oh, man. And he just kept spraying and spraying. Well, he has to stop at some point. You got to think. Yeah. So finally, my wife's like, look. As soon as he does the next big spray, which I don't know how many times I saw people jumping over it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like when you watch like a kid jump over a sprinkler. Or yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was hilarious. But watching him I run mean, down the beach. I mean, that had to ruin some fun. It depends on your idea of fun. <laughs> <laughs> like, I understand that people were disgusted. My sister-in-law, not happy. Yeah. She was, every time she'd be like, it smells so bad. My daughter's more concerned. Yes. My wife. That's why I hate people that bring dogs everywhere. Like, I hate when people do that. Well, see, you and I have different... I'm like, this is hilarious. <laughs> He's going to shit all over somebody. And I find it kind of funny. Yeah. So... But this is what happens, like, at airports now. Oh, to, yeah. Not to this extreme, but, like, dog shit and piss everywhere. It's like... It's what they do. Yeah, it's what they do. I mean, and I'm not mad at him. No. And obviously, it wasn't his intent. Clearly, his intent was to go swimming and have fun with the family. Yeah. His, what ended up happening was he alienated himself from everybody. Yeah. Everybody. So the wife's like, well, next time, what are we doing? What's the plan? She did not bring the dog back out the next day. No, no. She said. Oh, oh yeah. So, so basically, and he's so damn strong that he can like walk out into the water and then jump from the water onto the pontoon boat. Yeah. So like he'd be jumping in the boat and everybody's like, get, get off the boat, get yeah, off the boat. Yeah. And he's like, what? I was just hanging out. Yeah. And then you'd throw him out. And then all of a sudden he'd hit the water and start projectile vomiting all the way across. You just see it Shitting. going in the water. Yeah. How Not was that? vomiting. I don't know how else to describe it. You gotta <laughs> understand. It was so bad. He's just spraying. So finally he has one big one. My wife's like, we've got to go. So we throw him on the boat and we peel off. And now did, did you wrap him in a towel or something? So they were like, they were like, what if we put him outside of the wall of the pontoon boat on this little area and tie him up? And I was like, I'm not Griswolding this yeah, dog. Yeah, that's like I'm not doing it. That's I was like, he's on the coming, back or on the front? On the front. 
No, not either, on the back. Well, either way is bad. Like, no, I can't. I, yeah. I was like, I'm not you doing don't, it. Especially on the front, because if he falls off, he's going right up the middle, right to the prop. Yeah, it'll actually funnel him to the prop. Yeah. Perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're like, they're like, he'll be fine. What's I was like, I don't think you guys yeah. get this. And by the way, the way that any boat works, whether it be a pontoon or whatever, if you shit on the front part of the boat or you shit in the main part of the boat, you still have shit on the boat. Fact. <laughs> I would have wrapped him in a towel. Like, I would have sat with him and just been like... Well, my wife just got up near the front. Like, we're gonna, we're, like, we're sacrificing this towel. She just kind of got down low with him and was just like, I'm just going to keep him calm. Yeah. Like, he just evacuated. He'd made it seven minutes. That's yeah. his longest run. And I'm like, it's 15 minutes if I go full bore. Yeah. 20 minutes if I actually steer. Yeah. So, we're going back. And then I get to, like, the no-wake zone. I don't have much of a choice. My wife's like, why? You got to go. And I'm like, I can't. You don't want to be that guy. Like, I can't Don't do start it. your boating career by being the, I'm ignoring the no wake zone. That leads me to another story. Uh-oh. The jet boat. But that's neither here nor there. Okay. But so I get back and like, I'm, I'm like pulling through our cove and my wife's like, hurry up, hurry up. And I'm like, I can't. Yeah. Like, I have to go slow. Because you'll fuck somebody's stuff up by doing the, if you carve a wake, like, Absolutely. through a no-egg zone. Absolutely. Yeah. And the way this pier is set up, I got to go around these people's boat. Yeah. And then I have to swing around and do a 180. And then back, like, it's a difficult yeah, yeah, yeah. little spot. And I already know it's too shallow from the lack of trim the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, baby, I got to trim this up. I got to come around. I got to make this go. You're not and sightseeing. You're moving as fast as you possibly can. Literally doing can. what I yeah. can do. And as I'm coming around the bend, this dude starts on the oh, boat. Oh no! And I'm like, and everyone's like, ah! And so I'm like, I'm like the pressure of a guy trying who doesn't know how to boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because now I'm parking a boat and I'm doing a difficult maneuver where I'm having to trim up, do a full 180, and then pull it into here. So I'm having to go reverse, forward, like like yeah, and yeah, yeah. pull it right up to the dock, facing out. Yeah. It was not an easy maneuver, and now I got the pressure of kids screaming, women yeah, screaming, dog shitting, dog shitting, guys laughing, yeah, all the things, and people are coming down the dock like, "What's going on?" And the dog's like, and he's crapping." Oh my god! And so, and everyone's like, "Wrigley, stop, 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 stop!" I like, still love like, that people are saying, "What?" He cannot stop, dude. Under pressure. I fucking nailed. Nice. A perfect spin around, trim up, come in, no muck thrown. Boom, pulled it right up. My brother-in-law jumped out. Bam, held it where it needed to be. Too late. We pulled the dog out. This son of a bitch, as soon as he hit the dock, he'd been holding it as best he could. Yeah. He had the one little evacuation. Yeah. He, he got out of the boat, and he's so freaked out because he's like, everyone's screaming. Yeah, and yeah, Everything's yeah. going nuts. I'm on a boat. Yeah. He gets off on the dock. As soon as he gets on the dock, he drops his ass to the ground, and he's dragging himself by his front paws because he's like... Across the dock? Across the dock, getting oh. splinters all up in his ass, and he's spraying mud the whole way down the dock. Oh, my Just like... God. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> and, like, dragged him out all the way down the dock, and then up into the yard, and then crapped everywhere. Wow. But, like, he was a trooper. And so then I had to hose off the rental boat. Yeah, yeah. Rental boats are the best. Yeah, they the are. The best. I'm just hosing off Low the rental fact, boat. Dogs can shit all over, man. It's cool. It's the best. <laughs> I actually wrote it in my review. Five stars. Dog shit all over your boat. And the dock. And the dock. And he dragged his ass across all the splinters. Rental was, dock. And rental then, docks are the best. Rental docks are the best. <laughs> So then we had to get him back and, like, had to put the son of a bitch, like... I was going to ask next, like, how long did this go on? Like, could you, you can't bring him in the house. No. So now he can't go in the house. So now there's, a, there's baby gates on the, on the deck, and he can't figure out why he's stuck confined to the deck. Yeah. And I'm like, because you can shit through the slats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah. You know, I just pour water on it. Yeah. So then he's all bummed out. He's like, the other dog gets to go inside. Yeah, yeah. He's looking at me like, what I do? Yeah. We had a great day. Yeah. Boating, yeah, swimming. We're boating, shitting. What? <laughs> like, What's the problem? Doing stuff. Yeah, we were having fun. He's looking at me like, I've seen you do worse. Yeah. Like, Back. He's not wrong. Yeah. So yeah, he had a rough, he had a rough go. Wow. Yeah. How long did it last? Like, did, could you bring him in by the time y'all went to bed or whatever? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He tightened it up, and then he got to take. He a, literally tightened it up. Yeah, well, he so you know we fed him rice and stuff like yeah. that. Like just here's some sustenance, <laughs> here's some fresh water, and like people are like, you need to call the vet, and I'm like, I'm not calling the vet. Yeah, like, not for diarrhea. He's got a boatload of energy. Yeah, he's not. It's not like he's collapsed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he's he's consuming fresh water. He's yeah. eating rice. Like, I'm doing what I can do for the guy. But like, I'm not one of these people that, like, panics and calls the vet. No. So, and, like, people are looking it up on Google. They're like, he needs to go to a vet immediately. Like, he just... Well, they give him... He's made it to 20 minutes between poops. Like, yeah. We're progressing. Yeah. We're... And he's ingesting water. Like, we're just gotta... He's gotta hydrate him. Yeah. We've all had explosive diarrhea. Yes. So... We got him okay. Give him some, like, Pepto or some Imodium or something, slide it in his rice. I beat him. <laughs> just to remind him. Yeah. Who's boss. Yeah. You know, and then I, 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 while I was beating him, I was just petting the other dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one didn't shit all over the room, but <laughs> this one's my new favorite. Yeah, I love this yeah. dog. <laughs> you know what's, know what's better than hearing? Or worse than not yeah. hearing, yeah, shitting everywhere, yeah, bad dog. No, he was, he was, he was a trooper. Y'all have, I guarantee, that will not prevent you from taking that dog out again like that. No, I just need to find a way to get him to understand not to drink the salt water. That's not possible. It's a dog. I'm hoping that something will click in his brain. I, but see, I don't think he inject. From what I know of your dog, I don't see him standing at the edge of the beat you on drinking the water he's bounding around and accidentally ingesting water well, it's the like, way he swims yeah he like he like puts his head down yeah and like he just he, he was playing in he water loves it. And he loves it he's like a child accident when when wake rolls up when he's waves snapping come up, at he's it. biting yeah, at yeah, it. yeah no no he's a moron yeah but that's what dogs are yes so either he's gonna need to toughen up his stomach or, or you just gotta his- leave him on the boat like you can't let him play in the water we're gonna figure it out my dog l- hates water yeah i've seen your dog in the water he stays right on that little floaty <clears throat> yeah and he just but he hates being away from us more than yeah so he so he goes up. out on the tiki and just sits there and finds some shade and lays there and it's a good dog we'll put fresh water out and he won't touch it and then like the kids will climb on and he'll drink the lake water <laughs> like that's on the that's sitting yeah. on the tiki that's dripping off of them. Yeah, I'd be careful with that stuff. I'd well, it's not salty. It's fresh. That's right. Yeah, but fresh water still make you sick. Oh, boy. Yeah. You heard about the triathletes, right? <laughs> was, was, was that fresh or who knows? I mean, it obviously wasn't fresh. Well, it was, it was the UK, so it probably wasn't super fresh, but yeah. I bet it was a river near, you know. Yeah. But what was, it was the World Triathlon Championships. Yeah. Like they just had, they had a rough go of it. They were they were doing them over in <clears> the UK, and uh, apparently a sewage plant had dumped all the all the shit. They swam. They swam through it. <clears throat> now, if you're thinking like I'm thinking, we're thinking worst case scenario, like you're swimming through shit, but it probably wasn't that. Well, like, parts per million. Yeah, exactly. Mostly like, water. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like there probably wasn't a color change or anything. You probably just think it it looked like water, but obviously the PPMs. For the bad stuff, where it's high. And, and, and they tested it for E. coli, and it was like extremely lots of e. high coli. levels of E. coli. <laughs> but they're not drinking it. Apparently, Accidental. just the splashing yeah. and the swimming and all of that, you get an, it doesn't take a lot of E. coli to upset the, the ecosystem. Well, I mean, probably like mind. just getting in your nose and eyes probably isn't good. Oh, I guarantee they all had pink eye. Like, I would not. I'm going to go out on a limb and say you don't want shit water in your nose and eyes. I think that's fair. <laughs> I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to throw that out there. Yeah, no, I'm running the numbers yeah, yeah, in my yeah. head, and I'm like, yeah. I think Troy's right. Yeah, like that'll probably get you sick just in and of itself. Well, I don't know how many people were competing in the national championships for uh-huh. the triathletes, but I can tell you this, 57 of them Ooh. contracted horrific diarrhea from E. coli. Well... Yeah, no matter if that number is 60 or 160, you it's don't bad. want 57 of them getting... No, 57 of these, like, finely tuned athletes who made it all the way to the world championship. They worked their ass off to get there. Yeah. Ended up not being able to, like, complete the race because they... couldn't they had... complete the race. It hit them that hard that quick. 
many of them. Wow. Had such horrific diarrhea that it was like they can't get past the... At least it didn't happen instantly. But like you're training this whole time and you don't think that you need to take a shot of E. coli every night just to make sure that you can tune your body. Yeah, got to get that tolerance level up. That's why you can't, you can't do this stuff in the UK. That's why, that's why you and I aren't triathletes. It's the E. coli thing. Yeah. The threat of E. coli has kept me from being a triathlete. Exactly, because I was going to crush a couple. It's not the biking. No. Certainly not the running. No. It's, it's definitely not the swimming. It's the E. coli. Yeah. That in the training and the giving a fuck. <laughs> That's secondary. Uh, I'm really anti E. coli. I'm anti E. coli. Yeah, I've been that way for a long you time. You have no? been. You've uh, you've always been that guy. Always said that. Yeah. Everyone's like, "What are you scared of?" And I'm before like, it was cool, you were saying that. Yeah. Everyone like, I don't get it. E. coli. I'm like, no. Trust me, it's yeah. a threat. Yeah. It's a threat. Mark it down. I'm not that guy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> like like seventy thousand people a year die from E. coli. Yeah. It's a lot more than sharks. You guys are scared of sharks. I'm scared of E. coli. Yes. Poop. God, yeah, oh that does feet. suck. It's the world championships. You've trained. You've, you've earned your way. Well, you've competed in other triathlons That's what to I mean. earn a spot to that one. You finally made it. And they dump a sewage plant like right into the water. The problem is they were probably always doing that, and the promoters or whoever didn't do their research, you know? That actually makes perfect sense. They're like, look at this country. It probably wasn't on water. that day that they were like, Release the E. coli. <laughs> like it's probably, hey, we live off the coast and we've been where the government allows us to dump X amount of pounds of poo out here, and we're going to do it. Who know? Well, it's some corporation. I mean, probably not paying. No one's checking. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, put it in the water. Yeah. It'll flow out to the ocean. Speaking of dumping E. coli. Back to my trip to Chicago, you know, Dave Matthews band, that bus tour I've, I've years heard ago, about they, this where they famously dumped a, I think it was accidental. I'm going to go with accidental. The bus was on, all the bridges in, in Chicago are, are uh, graded, right? Yeah. So they, the bus accidentally dumped their wastewater into the river, but what really was the bad part was a tour boat was crossing under the bridge when it happened. So I'd heard that story when it happened. And I've heard it multiple times as I'm a big Dave Matthews fan. So when we were on our tour, the tour lady brought it no. up. And she also said that that bridge is marked. There's a plaque. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to be so famous that if I shit yeah. through a bridge, yeah. that somebody would be like, we should put a plaque I'm here. like, why are we proud of this? Like, that is so weird. I love that. That is weird. That's, if I could shit <laughs> somewhere and someone put a plaque up, you know you've made it. Yeah. It doesn't get much. You're like, this is Boyd Tinsley yeah. and Dave Matthews. Like, this, <laughs> yep. this is their shit. It, it, after 40 days of touring, this is where, <laughs> you know, like... <laughs> Over here, you see this a is very the urinal fine Dave example. Chappelle used. Like what? Like it's weird. It's the good stuff. <laughs> but like those people who got hit by it, they got hit by oh. some of the most famous poop, and they probably got rich. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that I'm sure that uh, court settlement was not cheap. Oh, you know where you settled that one? Out of court. out of court. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which means you pay more. Yes. You go, hey. How about this doesn't hit the news? Imagine, and then they put a plaque. I was up. gonna say, imagine <laughs> being Dave Matthews' attorney. Like, guys, I got this taken care of. One point six million. They're gonna break it up thirty ways. Blah 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 blah. Whew. Hey, it was an accident. We can move on from this. Uh, uh, We're uh, good to go. Before you sign, hold on. There's one <laughs> stipulation here. A little something in here. It says uh, they need to put a plaque up. There's on gonna the be brain. a plaque forever. <laughs> And every tour, and there's a lot of tours, <laughs> they're going to bring it up. It's going to be mentioned. I wrote it in some marching. Can we, can we not forget about this? All right, everybody's goggles on because <laughs> yeah. we're going under the yeah. Dave Matthews shit bridge. Yeah. Here's your Tyvek suit when we're <laughs> taking the tour. Why would we need yeah, to wear well, this? Well, well, according well, to one our numbers, time, one out of every 7,000 yeah, tours yeah. gets shit on by a famous rock star. Yeah. <laughs> Such a weird... All the great things about Chicago, and they're like, and if you look to your left, you'll notice the bridge that gallons of poo fell upon people. After the Dave Matthews incident, when the river turned green, <laughs> yeah. we are now dying the river yes. green. Ironically, every St. Patrick's Day... Yeah. 
in we're, honor of Dave Matthews. We're known booth. for dying at green, but on one day, a day like today, <laughs> it was that brown. <laughs> it was a day. Just, <laughs> just like this. Like <laughs> was that intentionally a Pee Wee's Big Adventure yeah. reference? <laughs> if you... If you can listen closely. Did we ever R.I.P.? <laughs> I think we Paul did. Rubens? I think we did. Okay. Because that is, it was a night just like tonight. <laughs> yeah. In fact, tonight's the anniversary. <laughs> that scene scared the bejesus out As of me. As a kid, when the oh. eyes boggled out. Oh, my God. That was the single greatest special effects oh, yeah. I had ever seen oh, at yeah. that time. The only thing that rivaled it was Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. When when that happened, but that one pales in comparison to Large March. Tell him Large March and shit. <laughs> and, up, and he walks in. Large March sent me. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone stops. It I was, was actually and then he goes the guy, it was a night. Just like the same story. Yeah. I was like brilliant, brilliant writing. I was actually messing around Netflix before I came over here tonight and there's a Pee Wee's uh, movie on Netflix, and I was like, I "Wonder where Big Pee Wee's Big Adventure is?" Because that's the one. Like that is. I the own one. it. So I like talked into my remote, and it's like you can rent it for eight dollars or whatever. I was like, "Damn it! Of course it's not free." Like all I, the Big I Top Pee Wee's free. All the other ones are free. Yeah. No, I bought it because it was one of those where I was like, "I'm gonna watch this again." Yes. Like that's always the 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 whenever like I go to rent a movie. And it's on. I always think to myself, will I ever watch this again? Because if I watch it one more time, I'm even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third time, I'm in the gravy. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, and I was looking at it, I was like, you know what? I think I'll watch Pee Wee's Big Adventure more than once. And then the dude died. I'm now even. Yes. <laughs> I'm now even. Yes. Such a good movie and such a good character. Like, and that's, and Pee Wee's Playhouse was such a great show. Oh. I think. Everybody's got a big butt, Simone. Let's talk about <laughs> your big butt. That line cracks me up every time. And I can't meet someone named Simone. Yeah, without then, thinking that. <laughs> Let's talk about your big butt, Simone. What's and then say? Randy gets so mad. <laughs> <laughs> What's he say? He's like, I'm a loner, Dottie. A rebel. You don't want to get mixed up <laughs> yeah. with a guy like me. And that bike was dope. And then he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Paul. No doubt. No doubt. I'm hoping that we're past the whole masturbation thing. What Come are you on. supposed to do in a triple X movie theater? Yeah. I mean, isn't that par for the course? I mean, what do you want to go there and just get blue balls really good and then go home and finish? I've never been to a triple X theater. Neither like, have I. I grew up in an era where I didn't have to do that. Yeah. But like they used to be like, it was literally the theater. So rows and rows of seats and you would watch a triple X movie. So you're supposed to go and not touch yourself. I'm just going to watch it. Yeah. Like a fucking weirdo. Yeah. It seems like only people that would be okay with that would be there. It seems to me that the bigger creep is the one who watches it. Yeah. He doesn't use it. Yeah. Like, I'm there for a purpose. Or the guy who turns in Pee Wee. You never believe what he was doing in this Triple X theater. Uh, I believe that wholeheartedly. That's what you do. Don't make it fucking weird, dude. You just ruined Pee Wee for all of us. You narc on me for doing what is expected at the thing. Yeah. Yeah. What were you doing in a crack house? Yeah. Smoking Smoking crack. crack. I was in a crack. What were you doing in the bar? I was having a drink. You'll never what, believe it. What were you doing in school? Learning. You're it's ne- all the same. So I followed Pee Wee and I saw him in Amsterdam in the red light district. You guys will not believe what he did. Yeah. This <laughs> like, son of a bitch banged a whore and smoked yeah. a joint. Like a weirdo. <laughs> yeah. What a weirdo. Why are you following him, by the way? <laughs> like, No doubt. <laughs> What are you whacking your bag to? And if to? I remember correctly, it wasn't part of big... St- I don't remember it being part of a big sting. Like, 47 people were arrested and Paul Rubens was one of them. It was no. like, we got, we finally got Pee Wee Herman. Like, so you finally ruined all these children's, like, yeah. uh, childhood dreams? Like, You know the screwed up thing is? If you watch before Pee Wee became Pee Wee, right? You go back to, there was like an HBO special... Where Paul Rubens did 
like a peewee like stage presentation. Like a like during his uh, stand up did like a yeah. This like is a, before like a bit in his stand up or something. It wasn't even a bit. Like he would do this like this like act mm-hmm. right, and it was on HBO. And Pee Wee was always perverted. Pee Wee was just... Oh, uh, yeah. He was never supposed to be a kid's thing. It's just he kind of... They were like, hey, you could do this kid's thing. Yeah. But in the very first one... Kind of ever- like uh, Herbert the Pervert on, uh, on Family, Family Guy. Guy. Like, he, he's not sexual, but everything he says, you take that way. You know, like... It's almost like The Simpsons, when they were on the Tracy Ullman yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like a little more weird. Yeah. Like, and then it became refined. Yeah. It like became, Homer was a really bad dad on the Tracy Ullman show. Yeah. Yeah. And then he just became like a. Like knew. he choked the shit out of, out of Bart on a regular basis. Big time. Like, yeah. He was more violent. Yeah. Dad. His eyes would bulge out because he yeah. ran around Nick. So in the original Pee Wee thing that was on HBO, one of Pee Wee's big gags that he loved he would put mirrors on his shoes. Ah. And then when the girls would come in, he would put his shoes under yeah, their skirts yeah. and he would look down and they'd be like, what are you doing, Pee Wee? And he'd yeah. Like, huh, nothing. And, yeah. <laughs> down here. and he'd be looking up their skirts. Like, yeah. So he was looking at panties. So the character of Pee Wee that Paul Rubens originally built was a perverted teenage boy, yeah. which was funny in its own way. And yeah. then it got turned into... The Pee Wee's Playhouse thing that became a kid's show with yeah. Cherry and all that bullshit. And then Not bullshit, you mean art. I, I agree with yeah, all of that. Yeah. But then, you know, all of a sudden the guy ends up being the guy that he always was, and we're like, What? Well, and it's like, first off, like the dude's a dude, right? Like he is playing in an- And now he's typecast as But a he did child. do a lot of other stuff. He was in a lot of other movies and stuff, you know, not as Pee Wee. If you look, all right, the first character I remember outside of the HBO show, Paul Rubens was in Cheech and Chong's Nice Dreams as a coked out, like, pimp dude yeah. with with the horse. And he was, he was doing all this coke. And, like, that was his character. And he's like, I'm the king of the hamburgers. Like, he was all uh-huh. fucked up. I remember him in Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the movie. But that was so that was later. Yeah, yeah, that was but later. Like, everything that Pee Wee did prior to Pee Wee's Playhouse was either joking around about mirrors and looking up skirts yeah. or being Doing on drugs, cocaine yeah. and like being and with whores and like he was this guy who then just accidentally fell into childhood fame. And then when all of a sudden he ended up with Triple X, everyone was like, This is fucking crazy. How could Pee Wee do this? And I'm like, He is a full grown man. Like he's a full grown man who yeah. got typecast. Playing this character. Yeah. Because there was too much money to ignore it. Yeah. But he was always on the outskirts of society. Yeah. And then found his way in on accident. But now it's like nobody even cares because it's like Hugh Grant gets a blowy. Arnold Schwarzenegger like sleeps with his maid. It's Eddie like, Murphy's got some yeah. transvestite. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's just, like, oh yeah, these are dudes. <laughs> like These are dudes. <laughs> yeah. But because they weren't typecast into this child yeah thing it's not and, and, and even when it happened and, and, and we were younger i still was like this isn't weird it's not like he did something with kids or like no he beat off while watching porn yeah if that is a crime lock me up yeah lock everyone up the majority well not in virginia anymore Woo, we clean that up yeah good for us you porn. cannot find any more turns adult out sites you, anymore turns out you can a lot. Turns out you can. <laughs> it turns out you just can't get the good ones. Or I mean, you can't get the ones you, you knew about. You can't yeah, get the mainstream I, now ones. I have to, now I have to risk my computer every time. Yeah, but now you're probably, and by you, I mean kids and the people you're trying to keep up, probably going to stumble upon some crazy stuff. Oh, you thought the stepsisters thing is? Yeah. What about when you're now fucking your donkey? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Yeah. It's weirder. Yeah. When it was a random donkey, it was fine. Yeah. But now it's yours? Too far. It's gross. Yeah. It's gross. And you think what Pee Wee did was wrong. Ew. What a perv. <laughs> what a perv. Dude, I feel like we're kind of off the rails. Yeah, we had kind of did. And little... we're like way into We should probably close this fucker now. Oh, wow. We are way too deep into way that. Way too deep. Yeah, that's, that's too much This episode show. is over, John. Yeah. It's over. <laughs>
Thank you guys so much for tuning in to this intellectual conversation. We solved no first world problems today. So let me solve one for you. Let me solve one. Overpriced sunglasses. In the third world, you can't get sunglasses. But in this world, you can. And not only can you get good polarized sunglasses that are of high quality in a lot of places, but you can get them at a good price at Nectarsunglasses.com. And if you drop Abacus in the coupon code, you get 20% off. We got to change that. The code? Why? Abacus is always here. Now, do you see why we need to change it? <laughs> I do. When you said it out loud. I do. We'll change it to Wrigley's Diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> There's a better coupon code anyway. Well, currently, you can still use Abacus coupon code. And if you need to get a mortgage, head over to ScreenDoorMortgage.com. Jimmy will take care of you, assuming you live in Virginia or Georgia. Yes. If you haven't had a chance to uh, head on over to our uh, Facebook page, you can always do so. And if you haven't had a chance to rate and review us, please do so. Yes. It would only help the cause. And if you've got people that are asking you what podcast you're listening to these days, because I know this comes up more and more in conversation. It used to be, what are you watching on Netflix? But I now... Every week, someone says, what podcast are you listening yep. to? You know what my number one answer is? Inside the Pallet House. That is, actually. Yeah. I can't believe you knew that. It's real easy. You tell them, but then even better yet, say, let me sign you up and do the old Cincinnati swap. You grab their phone, you sign them up for the podcast, you subscribe them, hand them back their phone. Now yep. we've got a subscriber and you've got a friend. And while you're there, subscribe them to Squeeze and Lemons. They like to drink, too, so you might as well hook them up with the best drinking podcast out there dude the malord episode came out last that week. was good it was good i got to hear their whole how they went through all of yep, the, the, yep. the mind it's, look it's difficult to make a drink they did it though out of if malord. you listen to us which i'm assuming you do because you're listening now and you hurt you remember our malord episode go back and listen to the most recent squeeze and lemons where they talk about how they got to that it's you'll a, hear the genesis the time and, doesn't really add up but you'll get there no it's like a marvel movie yeah. it's a multiverse thing you but we're you, yeah we're you in nerds it. will get it we're in yeah <laughs> thank you troy you make everything so much easier for me thank you guys so much for tuning in we'll be talking to you next week oh don't forget to venmo at inside the pilot house on venmo that's where you send the venmo money that's right we'll talk to you next week cheers cheers that was a pretty good podcast don't you think I do. Found a deli. We're getting back into the two-man weave. And we crushed it. Yeah. Who needs those other dorks? Well, sometimes we do.